I open in my AWS console. I already have link to Lambda functions here. It probably you don't have, so you can go to services and Lambda. Uh, here they are. Okay, so you may see I already have two Lambda functions when I was just playing around with uh, like preparing some posts for Go and Node.js. And let's now create a new one for Ruby. Yeah, the usual interface. However, let's first try to find for some blueprint, search for some blueprint, because usually they provide. Oh, okay, nothing for Ruby yet. Okay, not a big deal. We will just start from scratch then. Some function name. Okay, not like this, some function name. First Ruby function. Runtime, let's choose Ruby. Yeah, 2.5, cool. A role. Uh, let's create a new role with the template. Just some name. We don't need any specific permissions, so it will be just a basic role with basic permissions. A basic Ruby function, role. Okay, and policy template. Let's search for basic, basic lambda at edge. It contains just the basic permissions needed for lambda running and uh, precisely for writing to CloudWatch logs. And edge permissions means that you can write to any uh, in any region to uh, to logs in any region. Ah, I'm excited! Wonderful. Okay, I also see layers, but yeah, that's for a different part, a different talk. Okay, cool. Their editor. They already have some function prepared for us, and the runtime is Ruby 2.5. Wonderful. Can okay, handler. Everything looks clear. Let's now try to test this code, sort of in production, and go to test. Okay, here we'll just use the existing test event. I mean, yeah, it's a new test event with just a basic template with some hash. Just I will keep it as is. I will then modify it in the future. Uh, let it be a world test. Click and test. Cool. Yep. I get a response. Wonderful. Now let's try to modify it. Oh, yeah. I also see some console at the bottom. Oh, that's really good. Okay, I prefer having some sort of object oriented programming in Ruby, so let it be some class with actually a method call. Yeah, it, as any other method or function in, in Lambda world, it takes two params one is event, another is context. Event usually has um, some payload in there. The like body of request, if it's connected to API gateway, or actually it can be it most likely a more comprehensive object because for API gateway it's not just a body, it's, a, it's actually some object. And for context, we will see. Let's, let's check, I'm not sure what it is. I don't remember what it is. So let's first me try to just return some fun some String to understand how can we actually call a class here, not just a function. Okay, saving, testing. Yeah, I think it will fail. Yeah, because the handler is wrong. Define method lambda handler for. So you see lambda function is an, is the name of the function of the file, and then we should specify a class name and probably method name, and it will try to call a method of this class and currently. Call is not method of the class, it's a method of an instance. So let's check, change it to self call. So it will be method of class. Testing, yeah, response just hello string. Wonderful. What can we do with this? Yeah, let's actually see what we have in event and context. Oops. Okay, I'm going to build a proper response object. Okay, yeah, I'll require JSON. It looks like we need this library for decoding the response okay yeah however let's first try to just respond with the with the same body as we got and also i'll print even in context as you see so testing and in the execution console we see the response yeah the status code and the body it's all fine and then the function logs. Okay, this is the event we got, 
and uh, here is the object lovely context okay it has some deadline um, milliseconds function I ran low group name okay cool yeah, and function name itself memory limit yeah okay uh, yeah usually you don't need this attributes but it's fine that we can access them so I will try to just not use it at all Okay, and now I want to change my payload and actually use the payload in in the response. I mean, modify it, use it, add some condition, just some basic stuff. Let's be just one key value, color, and the name of the color. The color will be world, world, and we will greet the world. Okay, I don't need this anymore because we already checked everything. Let's have some some string, some greeting string where we'll say hello or something which came from event, from payload. Okay, so we get a color key from the fetch that's fine and just let's add some some default for this fetch method hello unknown for example mm -hmm. and we respond with this hello string just with a string maybe or better no let's be a hash and actually we will now see do we need to decode it to encode it as json or it's fine to be just a hash So let's respond with greeting and some and yeah in our string hello string okay okay saving time to test oops mm, seems that we don't we cannot use this for name params for named attributes okay uh, yeah fine let's be context why not oh no yeah let's first try without okay still wants to have context okay let's add context just not use it I prefer to just not have this attribute at all okay whatever cool it works we can remove the JSON because it works perfectly without JSON yep working Let's just check that it also works for for empty payload. I have no doubts it will. Okay, I'm just returning it back. That's it. I hope you are as excited as I am. And let's go and play more with the Ruby for Lambda functions because it really opens a completely new world for, for Ruby developers. Many of those were really afraid of going serverless because you have to either master your JavaScript knowledge or you have to learn other languages like Python or Go, which are completely easy to learn. However, people were afraid of doing so. And yeah, probably it makes sense to be afraid if you have nobody in your company who has experience with these languages. But now when you can use just Ruby for Lambda functions, it's awesome and let's go and hack it. Thanks a lot for watching. I think I'll continue exploring Ruby for Lambda functions or just other AWS announcements because there are tons of them. So stay tuned. I will definitely record something else in the upcoming days, maybe even today because ah, so many cool things to discover. See you soon. Goodbye.